Good morning and welcome to the Independent Hospital Pricing Authority's Activity-Based Funding Conference for 2021. My name is Dr Sarah Neville and I'm the Director of Analytics at IPA and I'll be your conference MC for the next few days. Before we officially open the conference, I would like to hand over to Uncle Waylon Boney and Auntie Leanne King from the Indigenous organisation Garawan, who will provide an acknowledgement of country. Yeah, well, go everyone. My name is Waylon Boney. Uh, my family come from uh, a little country town in northern New South Wales, a place called Ashford, uh, which is the Kamilaroi language and the dialect of that place is called Kweembo. Uh, if I was to introduce myself traditionally from where my family come from, I'd say Kamilaroi, Kweembo, Gurumbira, Ipai, and that would uh, explain everything about me and I'd be able to walk from the east coast of Australia to the west coast of Australia and be acknowledged by all the people all the way across. Um, and it would be, I'd be able to get to places like the desert at Uluru and they would say, uh, I would introduce myself like that and they would say, oh, that is your family over there, that's your mother, that's your father. And that's how uh, we were connected all the way across this country. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the place that I'm here today, which is the Darug people. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge all my ancestors that come from this place, uh, which is the stones, the, the grass, the ants, the insects, the snakes, uh, the furry animals like the kangaroos, uh, the echidnas, and also all the trees. So they're all our ancestors and we acknowledge them every day. Every, every day that we wake up, we acknowledge them, uh, including, you know, the sun. We, you know, in our culture, we believe the sun is a woman and we acknowledge her every day and thank her every day for rising up because uh, her rising up is not a given. All the knowledge that we get, uh, have gained is given to us from an old man named Damu Paul Gordon and Damu in, in our language is grandfather. So our, our grandfather gives us our, our, um, our knowledge and I'd just like to acknowledge him for giving me all this knowledge that I'm about to share with you all today. Hi, my name's Leanne King. I'm a proud Durick woman and I'm here today to share a little bit of story, a little bit of culture. A little bit about me is I've um, been coming out bush for the last 30 years and learning and practicing to be the best cultural person I could be. I've also been a university lecturer at a couple of, well, a couple of different unis, but um, teaching Aboriginal history, politics, culture and spirituality. And not only that, for, I think for the last six, seven years, I've been going out to the desert and working with them old women out in the desert. So I feel very privileged to, to have had them old people share and, and grow me up, so to speak. So hopefully you'll enjoy some of the, you know, the things that you were about to see. I am here now doing a, um, a demonstration on a smoking ceremony. Smoking ceremonies are really important to, to our mob. Um, we would do a smoking ceremony, one to cleanse ourselves, our bodies, our thoughts, our spirit. Um, and like it, we, when we would go and do a smoking ceremony would be at the beginning any, of any big ceremony smokings are done before corroborees smokings are done well i know i do smokings if i'm going to take anybody onto a site or if i'm going onto a site um it's i believe from from my perspective it's culturally respectful to to go on with that cleansed and positive mind so what i'll do now is just grab those leaves we've set the fire I'll grab the leaves and um, show you how I would do a smoking.
so there we have it that's our smoking ceremony um, I feel good I feel cleansed so thank you very much for, for taking in what a, a smoking is all about and um, I'll see you shortly for a little walk through the bush Before we go for a, for a little bit of a walk around the property and see some, some bush tucker and some medicine, I've collected a few things as you can see in my Coolerman. So we might have a little chat about some of the things that um, are here in this Coolerman. This here is Warrigal Greens or a native spinach, which is grown throughout, well, very much on the coast. So, but I've got some growing here. Um, not naturally, I've planted it, but uh, very high in vitamins. Most of our bush tucker is, is very high in vitamin and therefore we don't need to eat a real lot. One of the many trees that are found on this property, and it is from this property and also around country, is stringy bark. And stringy bark, as its name suggests, is something that we can make string out of. There are many, many materials that we can make string out of or weave from, but this is just one of them. And an end product after twisting and um, in a particular way. Um, yeah, there we have our, our string. One of the big medicines that are found on this property is G-Bung. And G-Bung has very, very high in vitamin C and is great for the immune system. So that's, you'll, you'll see many of the trees as they are, but this is just, um, just showing you the flower and also the, um, the young berries. Um, what else do we have? We have an emu egg. This is one that has actually been blown and um, you would only need one. If you were hungry and you knew where that uh, old man emu was sitting, you would just go and take one or two. You wouldn't take the whole lot. It's about sort of sustaining our mother and because part of sustaining that, those, those animals is about sustaining mother. Baskets. Um, weaving is very much part of... of, of of what we do and this is a beautifully woven basket but um, hopefully on our walk we might see some stuff or see some resources and raw material that we can make the baskets from and again as with the rope um, there's lots of different types of, of um, material that we can find to, to weave with. Okay, what we've come across here is a Currajong tree, as with the stringy bark, um, good for, for making rope and string. And this is Lamandra, and Lamandra makes for great weaving material. So you, you would just strip it like that, strip it like that, then um, this is just a short way, very quick way of making a bracelet. Um, you would take that top bit, turn it into a circle, bring it down. And that there weave, that, that stitch there, or whichever way you call it through the weaving, is a very simple stitch and is used in basket making and um, a whole lot of other things. There we go. For little hands, there's a bracelet. Uh, so now we're going to show you a bit of uh, traditional dance uh, from our country, uh, show you how our people have danced for thousands of years in this place. Uh, we dance to connect to our mother, connect to our ancestors, uh, always paying respect to them, always acknowledging them, uh, and dance is uh, still done the same way as our people done it for thousands of years, just like that smoking ceremony. So once again about that continuation, not preservation. So the first dance that we are going to do is called always oh, a welcome dance. And that dance is from Western New South Wales and it's painted on the walls in that country and, and then paintings out on that wall is dated back, carbon dated back uh, to be 
6,000 years old and older. So that dance is still done the same way, you know, that our old people have done it for over 6,000 6, years, and that's the evidence of it. Rewind and fish traps are the oldest man-made structure in the world. They're, they're dated to be 40,000 years old, uh, and we still go and, and do them ceremonies and, and go and visit that place. <laughs> So Waru uh, is about paying respect to all the crows, uh, the crow people. It also pays respect to our moiti, acknowledges our, our moiti, uh, one of our bloods for our kinship uh, system. So Baiemi, our god, our creator, is the eagle. And then in our stories we have the crow, which is he's always like uh, not battling, but always challenging Baiemi, and he's he's nearly as clever. So they say, oh, the crow is nearly as clever as Baiemi but not quite so. Nearly as clever as the eagle, but not quite so. The crow is really important to our, our culture as well in our system. The shag leg dance that you see in, uh, when the dancers were coming forward in the shag leg uh, is, just talk, is just talking about that strength, so strengthening one another and moving forward together and giving each other that energy. So Yana Munyana is a see you later dance and what we're saying see you later, uh, you'll see the dancers go uh, uh, pointing in the directions and they're saying see you later to you know all our ancestors as well as um, you know all the people as well so you know we're saying see you later to the people see you later to all the ancestors but also paying respect to our, our mother Gunita Kun, our father Boyemi and also our ancestors which is like the Huawei as well like the rainbow serpent you know but, but plus all the trees and the grasses and everything Yana Munana, Ora Nora, Yana Munana, Ora Nora, Yana Munana, Ora Nora, Yana Munana, Ora Nora, Yana Munana, Nora by Yana Munana, Tanga, Yana Munana, Nora by Yana Munana, Tanga, Thank you again. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, see you all soon. Uh, can't wait for you all to come and, and do a few dances with us here in our country and allow us to share more of our beautiful culture with you. You know, Kutunu, love you all. See you soon. Thanks very much, Garuan, for that beautiful ceremony. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce IPA's Chief Executive Officer, James Downey, who will officially open the conference. Prior to his role of CEO, James was the Executive Director of Activity-Based Funding at IPA, where he led the teams responsible for delivering the classification, costing and pricing functions of IPA, as well as the data acquisition activities. He previously held roles with the Victorian Department of Health, the Royal Children's Hospital Melbourne, and various technical and operational roles in the resources industry. Welcome, James.
Thanks very much, Sarah. Um, and thanks to Uncle Whalen and Auntie Leanne and dancers from Garawan for a, a fantastic acknowledgement of country. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the many countries uh, around Australia that we're all meeting on today and pay my respects to elders today and those who walk in spirit. Um, good morning and welcome to uh, the Independent Hospital Pricing Authority's activity-based funding conference for 2021. Obviously this year we haven't been able to meet in person, um, but it's been a fantastic uh, pleasure for me to be able to open up this conference to, uh, globally. And this year, not only do we have uh, lots of attendees from around Australia, we also have people from Ireland, uh, the USA, the UAE, the UK, uh, Switzerland, Belgium, Canada, Sweden, Denmark, France, India, uh, our neighbours in New Zealand, uh, Qatar, Singapore, South Korea and Croatia. And no doubt I've just created an international incident by forgetting somebody, so I apologise um, in advance. Uh, so this year we have um, 2,170 delegates uh, registered, which is um, more than we've ever had at an ABF conference. So whilst there have been lots of setbacks over the last 18 months, uh, there has been some uh, really great opportunities uh, to open up the conference more broadly. I'm really pleased to see uh, lots of familiar faces registered, uh, lots of people that we've met before, um, and I look forward to connecting with, uh, with you later. And also would like to really welcome anyone who's here for the first time. Um, I think this might be our eighth conference, uh, and no doubt there's some warriors who've been to them all, but really want to welcome everybody um, particularly if you're here for the first time. I think we've got a, an absolutely fantastic um, program for you that the team worked really hard on. Um, this conference is also a great opportunity to reflect on what we've achieved nationally uh, with activity-based funding over the last 10 years. Um, it's been an absolutely fantastic effort from everyone involved um, at the hospital level, uh, in government, in the states and territories and the Commonwealth, and also the team here at IPA. And I think it really is a national project we can rightly be very proud of. Um, since AVF was introduced in Australia in 2012, we've seen what is possible um, with not only a significant slowdown in the, in the growth of costs uh, in public hospitals for all Australians, uh, but also some really big improvements uh, around the measurement um, and pricing for safety and quality. So with our theme in mind for this year, activity-based funding into the future, responsive, relevant and reliable, uh, it's time to look even further ahead. Uh, as many of you know, uh, just over 12 months ago, uh, the addendum to the National Health Reform Agreement was signed and uh, that gives um, both IPA and all of us involved in activity-based funding um, some uh, great uh, framework to move forward uh, with um, with continued improvement to the system. So as I said, we've got a, a fantastic program um, that the team worked really hard to put together and we've got 47 different speakers this year um, who have all uh, been very generous with their time. Uh, we've got four absolutely fantastic keynote speakers. Um, the first of which uh, is at one o'clock today uh, and is Dr. Louise Shaper, the CEO of the Australasian Institute of Digital Health. Um, who will be talking about the role of digital disruption in healthcare, um, particularly this current period that we're going through and uh, also looking forward to the future. Um, tomorrow, I'm really excited uh, by our two international keynote speakers. Uh, the first one coming live from the US at um, a very unsocial time for him uh, is Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel who is, um, amongst other things, the Vice Provost of Global Initiatives um, and the Diane S. Levy and Robert M. Levy University Professor, co-director of the Healthcare Transformation Institute and a Professor of Healthcare Management and Medical Ethics and Health Policy at the Perelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, which is quite a mouthful. Um, uh, Dr. Mann is going to share his insights into the future direction of alternative payment uh, models and provide an overview of uh, the work that he's been leading, uh, reimagining end-of-life care. Uh, tomorrow's second international speaker, um, who I'm really also looking forward to, 
hearing from is Dr. Sally Lewis, uh, who's the National Clinical Lead for Value-Based and Prudent Healthcare in NHS Wales uh, and an honorary professor at the Swansea School of Medicine. Uh, Dr. Lewis will be looking at the many ways we can increase value across the healthcare system through approaches to improve outcomes that really matter to patients. So I think a, a really important discussion that we're having here in Australia, and I think uh, Dr. Lewis will really add to that, um, that discussion. Um, our final keynote speaker is uh, Dr. Tobias uh, Warren, who is the business area manager and orthopedic surgeon uh, at Capio Orthopedics in Sweden. Um, he will give us a unique uh, clinical perspective on how clinical leaders can translate the ambition of new reimbursement systems in, um, in value-added activities uh, and specifically looking at the bundled payment model uh, for knee and um, hip arthroplasties uh, that are being used in Stockholm in Sweden. Uh, I was lucky enough to see him uh, speak at the PCSI conference 18 months ago and I, I, I'm sure it will be a very exciting uh, and interesting uh, presentation. Um, I hope you've all got questions prepared for the Q&A sessions. Uh, if you haven't, this is your prompt to get working on them. Um, so we've got two um, uh, with two panel discussions hosted by Sophie Scott from the ABC uh, and tomorrow afternoon we have uh, Professor Stephen Duckett uh, with a session that's focused on the basics of activity-based funding uh, which you, um, if you haven't had a chance to watch his video uh, it's in the resource gallery which gives some great insights and then tomorrow there'll be a chance to ask Stephen questions about um, ABF. Um, we've got a number of plenary sessions as well, and the first taking place right after this will be the chairman or the chair of uh, the IPA, Shane Solomon, who will present um, on the future directions of activity-based funding in light of the new addendum. So uh, I'm sure that's what you're all online for now uh, to hear uh, Shane speak. Um, on Friday, we've got uh, three policymakers um, who will look at the impact of COVID-19 on healthcare delivery in Australia. Um, and then finally, uh, a really exciting speaker uh, is uh, Selwyn Button, who is the Registrar of the Office of Indigenous Corporations. Um, and he will be um, talking to us about uh, Indigenous health and the interplay between the primary healthcare sector and public hospitals. Uh, so a really important topic and uh, a really good speaker. So uh, make sure you tune in for that one. Um, I'd really like to acknowledge all the delegates who have uh, submitted um, their abstracts uh, for the program. Uh, you can see it's a really exciting uh, sessions um, of concurrent sessions this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon. Um, and uh, it really is these um, local efforts that really make a big difference. Um, so before I pass you back to our illustrious MC, Dr. Sarah Neville, uh, who's going to take us through some housekeeping for the event, um, I'd just also like to encourage you all to share um, your thoughts um, and impressions online as we as we progress. Um, we always love to see lots of activity on Twitter. Um, and this year we're using the hashtag ABF21 throughout the event. So please don't forget to tag IPA and use the hashtag um, uh, throughout the conference. Um, that's all from me. Um, I'll see you again at the end of the conference where we'll announce the winner of the best paper and the best presentation award. Um, otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoy the conference and I look forward to connecting with as many of you as possible uh, through the meeting hub. So thank you very much and back to you, Sarah. Thanks, James. Now, before we finish up this session, as James foreshadowed, um, I've just got a few housekeeping points for you. So firstly, at the end of each session, you'll need to click the back to timeline link in the top right hand corner, where you'll be taken back to the conference program. You can then click on the next session and wait for that session to begin. Secondly, if you have any questions for presenters, which I'm sure you will, um, there'll be a live Q&A function on the right. 
click on it to open up a text box where you can type in your questions. You'll also be able to see questions that other delegates have asked and you can like existing questions to sort of push them up to the top in terms of popularity. Thirdly, at the end of each session, you'll have an opportunity to rate the session out of five stars. So please do let us know what you think. Don't forget to tag IPA um, on LinkedIn and Twitter and use the conference hashtag ABF21. You'll have the opportunity to vote for your favourite presentation of the conference on day three, and the winner will be announced during the closing remarks, as James just mentioned. I'll be reminding delegates to vote when the poll opens on Friday, so you'll have a reminder of that. Now, finally, if you have any problems or issues at all throughout the conference, please click the live support button in the top right hand corner where you'll be able to chat with one of the conference organisers to get you sorted out. Now let's jump back into the timeline and I'll see you in the next session.